Welcome to DIY Guitar Making. I just got something very cool in the mail here. And this is a beautiful set of Horrified Sitka Spruce. Here, I'll show you. I got them stickered right now. Pull these out. I'll show you the whole book matched set here. Of course, this is unjoined and unsanded, not thicknessed. You can see the golden amber color, which we'll talk about in a moment. Just for comparison, I've got some nice, almost looks like it's bleach white regular Sitka spruce that's not torrified. Let me first talk just for a moment about the process of torrefaction and what torrefied spruce actually is. Basically, it is wood that has been baked to replicate the aging process. It doesn't actually age the wood in uh, the way that aging really happens where you actually sort of damage the cellular structure of the wood. What you're doing with torrefaction is you are baking the wood, which cooks out some of the volatile organic compounds that are in the wood. And it uh, also at the same time, that baking process closes off the pores so that the wood no longer exchanges moisture which causes expansion and contraction in the wood so it no longer exchanges moisture with the environment right it's closed off and what that means the reason why that's important to us as builders is because that means stability it's always great to work with very stable wood wood that's not going to move as much over time and especially with seasonal changes and all of that Okay, um, so that's basically, in a nutshell, what torrefied wood is. I go deeper than that on the process of torrefaction in a podcast episode that I did. Yes, I have a podcast as well, also called DIY Guitar Making. So if you want to learn a little bit more, you could check out that episode. But in a nutshell, we're baking the wood to one, make it more stable, and two, uh, pull out those organic compounds which would naturally come out over time anyway. And I guess I didn't mention the reason why we care about those organic compounds coming out is because what that actually does is it makes the wood lighter. There's actually less, because you've pulled out things from the wood, um, the, the wood is lighter. <laughs> And so it has more of that brittle. Remember, brittle is what you want with your soundboard material. Or glass-like is a term that's used a lot. Uh, vitreous, I believe, is the word for glass-like. But I'm not a dictionary. So you, we want that brittle feel to the wood and a brittle tone. That's what good tone wood is. And... I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to translate over to you guys, but when I tap this, I don't know what you're hearing over there, but in my ear, that is like a chime. It's incredible. It really is. Um, and just for comparison, I actually went through a stack of Sitka spruce, untorified, to just find the best one. And this was the best sample I had. And don't get me wrong, this still sounds great. Ignore the fact that it's a much lower tone. That's actually not really what I'm listening for. But I'm listening for um, a chiminess and just a kind of long sustain to it. If a piece of wood goes thud, then, you know, it's pretty obviously dead and not glass-like, vitreous, and not brittle. So that rings out a lot. It sounds great, but this I was surprised to find. I actually kind of expected at this to be pretty good, but not quite as above, uh, far above and beyond the untorified. So I'm going back to this now. Hold on.
Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this right off the bat. Um, and of course, this is just an early, when you have rough milled wood like this, tapping on it is more meaningful in person because while you're holding it in your hands, you, without even thinking, just have a sense for the thickness and the weight of the material. So it gives you kind of a rough, when you tap it, intuitively you can discern like, oh, this is gonna sound great when it gets to its final thickness, if that makes any sense. If I held up a really thick piece of Sitka and a really thin one, and I can still tap them both and get an idea for their potential because my brain kind of does the subtraction part of the math there to say, oh, this sounds pretty good right now, but it's way too thick. So when that comes down, um, I expect it to sound better. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my own head. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and uh, I'm in the process right now of book matching a whole bunch of tops for the fall guitar build workshops. And actually this one tourified one is for my friend Lenny who will be in one of the September workshops. He special ordered this tourified spruce. So why don't we go ahead and uh, I'll take you along for the ride and you can see, um, you can watch me book match and join this Torrified Sitka Spruce set. Okay, here we are guys. I got my light box right here, my shooting board where I can shoot my joint for the two halves. And of course, here's my book match set here that we'll be working with. So let's just lay this open to start. And of course this light box is here so we can candle this joint. And I haven't done anything with the joint yet, so of course you can see there's nice big gaps there. Lots of daylight that we want to get rid of. Also I have my template here, so I can just real quick check. And you can see I've got plenty of room uh, to work with here to get my orchestra model body size for this specific guitar. Okay, so we're gonna stack these on top of each other with the joint on the inside like this, place it on my shooting board. I'm sorry, let me turn off the air conditioner here. It's pretty loud. And now I have this little clamp here, this toggle clamp to help hold things down just like that. But when I'm kind of moving quickly, as I do sometimes with the, the tops, because they're softer wood, uh, and, and if I know it's just kind of going to be an easy joint, uh, I won't necessarily use it. So I just want to point that out so you don't think it's absolutely required when you're building a shooting board. You can just, you know, have a regular, regular shooting board without the clamp. And... As long as you're comfortable with the technique, it's not a big deal to just kind of hold your hand here in the middle. I can take my number five jack plane here and just kind of square everything up like that by pressing the sole of the plane inward. It just kind of helps take the two pieces and pull them in nice and in line with each other. Now I'm going to take this and just do a couple full length passes here. And that's pretty good. And if your plane is well set, um, you can accomplish this. One, if your plane is well set and the sole is flat and everything else. And two, your the wood you're using, the grain doesn't dip in and out. It's it That could be the whole process right there. You could have your joint. All right, so I've got it close with the number five jack plane, uh, but I did take it over here and take a look at it and there was still some daylight. So I like to just use this Stumac fingerboard leveling beam with some 220 grit, very fine grit sandpaper stuck on it. 
and I'm just going to target the necessary spot. All right, let's have a look. Okay, wow, that looks great. Uh, I'm ignoring this very top piece, that's all. There's a portion of this that's just getting cut off. Anyway, it won't even be on the guitar, right? And so that is perfect from there to there. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tape it in alignment. So I like to just place it on the shooting board like that, just so I can line it up. And then I'm gonna place a piece of tape and another piece of tape. This is to hold my book match together. Because now what I'm gonna do on the other side, this is the book match side. This is our joint. On the other side, we're gonna cut an angle here. And so, I'm gonna take this, trace out my shape, which just tells me where I can make this angled cut. And that, like I've mentioned before, I've got plenty of space to work with. So, right there. I don't know if you can see that well, but I drew an angled line right there. And just to give you a little preview of what that line is all about, you can see right here, I have a different set already set up in the joining board. And so what I did was after I traced out that line, I cut a pretty extreme angle into those two pieces, which turns the two pieces into this wedge shape that you see here. So then I can add glue to the joint, place my two pieces down, put weight on top, which is very important. And then I simply tap that in, okay? Um, here, I'll show you how I really do it. With a block like this, and then I tap right on that end. So just use a nice hefty scrap block. Give yourself a good tap there. Sorry, I had to put down the camera to show you that. And the weight is just there to keep it, when you tap it inward, to keep the two pieces from buckling upward. There's a lot of pressure that happens when you tap it inward and it wants to go somewhere, right? So you gotta have the weight there to keep it down, okay? And of course, these two fences are set up to be at the same angle that I've cut into those two sides. So, I got my other joining boards here. I'm gonna go ahead and set up that uh, Torrified Spruce book match set right here in this one. And then I got another set here I'm gonna do in this one. Um, I think this video has covered enough for you guys for now. So I think you kind of get the whole process there so I won't uh, drag you through the rest of it. So this was fun guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.